Well, I go, I go to meetings, and it, it's just kind of fun, both for the general public, but even more so, I think, in front of doctors. And you say, you know, what's LDL? And everybody smirks, oh, God, you know, this is a basic, you know, LDL. It's bad cholesterol. You know, so, well, what is it? And then finally, it's going to be, you know, low density lactic protein. That's right. So what is it? Bad cholesterol. No, no, what is it? Density lipoprotein. And I, I go back and forth like this five or six or seven times. And I say, well, say that name over and over again. Low density lipoprotein. It's not even cholesterol we're talking about. It's actually a protein. And so this myth that HDL and LDL are good and bad cholesterol, that's totally through marketing efforts. That LDL is actually a protein. HDL is actually a protein. Cholesterol is just cholesterol. There's no such thing as good and bad cholesterol. But cholesterol is a kind of a fatty, waxy chemical that is not going to uh, be soluble in the water environment of blood, and so it has to be transported by protein to make it water soluble. And the protein that transports cholesterol to tissues is called LDL. And we have other proteins just like that. You know, we have albumin in the blood, and you've got sex hormone binding globulin that, that binds to testosterone and to estrogen, which are derived from cholesterol. You don't hear about them being, you know, good and bad testosterone or good and bad estrogen, of which there certainly are. Um, it's just cholesterol. There's, you can have oxidized cholesterol, just like you can have oxidized omega-3 fatty acids, oxidized fish oil, oxidized EPA. Oxidized EPA probably does more damage than, than cholesterol. Cholesterol is just cholesterol. Yes, it can oxidize. Uh, that means you want to keep it from oxidizing, then it will do less damage. But why are we making it in the first place? Where does cholesterol come from? Well, we know it comes from your liver. It's manufactured in your liver mostly. And then the LDL transports it to tissue. And if you go by the marketing that, that the pharmaceutical reps and, and the TV advertising and all the marketing that's done by pharmaceutical companies, you're left with the impression that, well, your liver must be manufacturing cholesterol for the prime purpose of giving you a heart attack. Well, evolution doesn't work that way. Nature doesn't work that way. We don't evolve uh, chemicals in our body to give us a disease. Now, it's just, that's absurd. And uh, so what is cholesterol there for? Well, one thing we just mentioned is it's certainly a precursor to all of, all of the other steroid hormones. You can't make testosterone or estrogen or cortisol or DHEA or pregnenolone or uh, a multitude of other steroid hormones that are necessary for health without cholesterol. But even more importantly, you can't make a cell membrane without cholesterol, at least not naturally. And so if you're going to make a new cell in your body, you have to make cholesterol. And the major reasons we make cholesterol and why we have LDL is to take the cholesterol to tissues so you can make new cells to repair old damaged ones. So if you, if you're, uh, if you got inflammation, which is important in health, and you are damaging tissues, one of the first things you have to do is mop up the damage, clean it up, and replace the damaged tissue with new fresh tissue. And to do that, you have to make new cells. To do that, you have to make cholesterol. So the LDL, far from being a poison trying to kill you, is taking cholesterol to tissues so that you can repair old, worn-out, damaged cells and make new, fresh, healthy cells. That's what it's trying to do. Why do we have HDL? Well, they call that the good cholesterol because they give you an image that it's taking cholesterol away from tissue and keeping it from killing you. Well, that's also far from the truth. Where is it taking it to? You know, HDL is not taking it out of your body. It's not trying to get rid of it. HDL is taking it back to your liver so it can be recycled. I guess if you believe medicine... It's because if it didn't kill you the first time, then maybe it can do it the second time. No, well, that's absurd. But it's not, you're not getting rid of cholesterol. You're trying to recycle it because it is such an important molecule. And, and nature, uh, if nothing else, is, is uh, uh, thrifty. And it would be much easier to recycle the cholesterol than have to remanufacture it. It's a fairly complex molecule to manufacture. It's much easier just to recycle such an important molecule that uh, that a 
allows life to exist, not just in human form, but in any form. And uh, therefore, you have HDL. So then you have, uh, you know, so-called good and bad cholesterol, HDL and LDL, which is, are strictly shuttles that take cholesterol to and from tissue. But you have different sizes of LDL particles. And that does become relevant. But most people haven't heard of that very much. And if you ever get it tested, and the drug companies really don't want you to know that. They don't want you to know that science because it would limit the number of people going on cholesterol-lowering drugs because cholesterol-lowering drugs don't uh, modulate the size of the particles. That's done through diet. That's one of the major things that insulin does. If you have really small LDL particles, it can get stuck between the lining of the, the cells that line the artery. There's a little gap between the right, kind of fried egg-like cells that, that line your artery called the gap junction. That's so nutrients can get in and out. That's how the lining actually gets fed. And so you have a little little gap in there. And if the LDL particles are really small, they kind of get stuck in that gap, and they don't circulate. And when things don't circulate, they turn rancid, not just in your body, but outside your body. Everything has to flow. And so if LDL, especially something that's highly oxidizable, gets kind of stuck there, it can oxidize, it starts up inflammation, and then it can cause trouble. Uh, but if the LDL particles are large, they're not going to get stuck there. They're going to flow, and they're going to do what they're supposed to do, and they're supposed to be large particles, so they don't get stuck. And if you eat properly, which is really the only known good way to regulate LDL particle size, then it does the right thing. It takes the cholesterol to your tissues. HDL can take it back. It doesn't get stuck. It doesn't oxidize, set up inflammation, uh, and cause damage. So any molecule in your body is capable of causing damage. I mean, it causes more damage probably than any other molecule or class of molecules in the body, which causes more inflammation, which causes much more heart disease from a direct standpoint is glucose and other sugars. They cause glycation and form so-called advanced glycated end products, uh, and that's an acronym for ages, and that was on purpose because it's one of the major molecular mechanisms whereby damage accrues and we get disease and we age and we die, along with oxidation. So glycation is very important, and glucose will, will glycate, and when it glycates, it sets up inflammation. It's bad for your body, so your body has evolved a method to deal with it. And we know that uh, macrophages have what are called receptors for ages, so that they can bind to the ages and gobble them up and get rid of them. So those receptors for ages are called rages, and that's again on purpose because it gives you the picture of the raging inflammation that can occur, which it does. And so when you get ages, you get rages, and then you get inflammation, and then you get damage, and that then is what causes heart disease. It keeps you alive in the meantime, but if it, if you have it too much, then the damage control ultimately takes its toll. You get scar tissue just like you get on your hand if you cut yourself, but inside your arteries, there we call it plaque. 